Are you wondering how to make your resume stand out? Are you curious what recruiters and hiring managers look for in a good resume? You're in luck. We're here today to give you the inside scoop on how to craft a killer resume. Ready? Ready. Okay. <laughs> Ready, okay. <laughs> So, how should a good resume be formatted? Let's start this with a glass of wine. Uh-uh, that's not what I meant. I meant to say, a good resume is like a fine wine. It takes its own time and effort to craft, but once it's well done, ooh, it's so satisfying. Here are a few tips on how to format a good resume. Think of yourself as the minimalist artist. Make sure your resume is simple and clean with plenty of white space in it. Negative space is your friend. And Use readable fonts like Times New Roman, Arial, or Calibre. Avoid all those decorative fonts and unwanted colors. Next, imagine your resume is like a dating profile. You want to make a first good impression and make sure you stand out from the competition. Make sure you list your best qualities, achievements, and experiences to catch the attention of the potential employer. But please don't write long stories. Keep it short and simple. And finally, treat your resume like a piece of art. Each section has to be a masterpiece with unique, balanced structure and harmony. Make sure you use minimal colors, readable fonts, and simple format. Overall, use action-oriented language, proofread your resume carefully, and keep it concise. Now that we have talked about how to format a good resume, let's dive deep into what should be included in a resume. Well, let's start from the top and chronologically work our way down the page in order of importance. First topic, do you need a picture? Unless you're applying for a creative role in marketing or PR, I would not recommend including a picture. The next logical step is the summary and objective section. There's two ways to go with it, summary and objective. I recommend using a very brief summary when you're applying to jobs within your expertise. Make sure to include relevant experience and be straightforward and to the point. If it's an objective, you're applying to a job that is outside of the scope of your experience. Make sure to include action words in there that really entice the reader. And finally, tailor your summary or objective to the job that you're applying to. Underneath the summary section, I would highly recommend including your education and professional certifications. If you're pursuing a degree and it's in progress, feel free to put that on there as well. That's completely fine. Maybe italicize it a little bit. Uh, to kind of uh, delineate between some that have been completed and some that are in progress. If you have a GPA above a 3.4, I would include the GPA on there, but if not, just go ahead and leave it off. Underneath your education should be your professional experience. This is going to be your meat and potatoes. I highly recommend that for each position, you include start and end dates. This, this includes, if you've had a promotion, I wanna see a start and end date as well as an overall length of time that you've been at that company. In addition to that, try to put as many statistics and efficiencies as possible in your resume. If you're a recent graduate, I encourage you to put your internship experience and position it just like you would your professional experience. Underneath experience, I highly recommend putting a software and skills section. This is a great way to not only capture the applicant tracking systems algorithms, but it is a very organized place to put all of the software that you've had over the years. So now that we've talked about how to craft a killer resume, let's talk a little bit about that LinkedIn profile. Your LinkedIn profile is like an online, more personalized snapshot of your resume. Think of your LinkedIn profile as a window to your professional self. Unlike a resume, we absolutely recommend you add a profile picture, but keep in mind who your audience is. This is a professional networking site. Okay, next, let's talk about the intro section in the LinkedIn profile. The intro section on your LinkedIn profile is like a summary in your resume. Think of it as an opportunity to showcase more personality. It's like giving your profile curb appeal. Like a resume, experience and education should be included. However, it should be in a more condensed format. A great feature on LinkedIn I definitely recommend is the Open to Work badge. It allows employers to know that you are actively looking for a position. But if you're not, it's a way to keep your 
profile active and open to future opportunities. Lastly, if a recruiter reaches out to you, always respond. It's a way to make a connection and grow your personal network. To sum it all up, writing a resume is like going to a gym. It's not always fun, but the results are totally worth it. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to connect with us on LinkedIn, and please check out our open opportunities on our corporate website. We look forward to your application.